home sales are down, which ultimately is a good thing because inventory levels, well, they're down as well. But what is it that is actually holding people back from buying a new house? Let's examine the reasons that the New Home Trends Institute found in their survey. One of the great things about the survey and the data is that it also shows the change in response over the last three surveys. So we're going to be looking at data from March 2023, September 2023, and then March of 2024. The survey was of 1,265 homeowners and renters with household incomes of $50,000 or more. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb and I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to the real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Now, the biggest response made in the survey was one of waiting for the mortgage rates to decline. 33% of all respondents said this was one of their reasons as to why they are not buying a house right now. And this makes sense. First off, I will use myself as an example. It makes zero sense for me to buy a new house. I have a beautiful pair of golden handcuffs that they just tie me to my house. The 2.75% interest rate incentivizes me and well, all the people like me to put on an addition or remodel the areas of my house that don't make any sense. Let's say my principal on my mortgage now is $600,000 at 2.75% that my principal and interest payment would be $2,450 at 6.75% rate. That same $600,000 mortgage payment is $3,892 a month. That's a $1,442 per month difference. It doesn't make sense for a current homeowner to move depending on a homeowner's current mortgage payment, but it can make sense at different times for different people to make a move. Let's say your interest rate is 4%. Okay, well, that's a little over of a $1,000 per month difference in payment. Maybe that's worth it to you. Or maybe someone got a big promotion and is busting at the seams in their home. Then it may be worth it for them to take on that bigger payment as well as the bigger house to meet their today's needs. For renters waiting for rates to go down, it makes zero sense. They are paying a 100% interest rate to their landlord while making that payment that offers them zero tax benefits to boot. Not to mention that there will be a huge spike in demand once rates actually go down, which will only drive up prices even more. If you are a homeowner, then the drive up in prices is a little less worrying due to your initial home also having those values go up. The jump will be a little, well, less painful as you move up in asset sizes as a 10% gain on a $500,000 house is less than the 10% gain on a $1 million house. But nonetheless, it makes for a little bit easier of a pill to swallow when you are moving up. Now, 29% of people said they have no plan to buy. Sounds good. I know I'd be in that camp. I tell my wife that she could just bury me in the backyard because I'm not going anywhere. The third response with 27% was waiting for a light stage or style change. It was interesting to me because you would think that this one would stay consistent. I wonder if the issues with the economy and inflation are driving these numbers down. In other words, children are staying at home longer or maybe people are pushing off retirement. These numbers, they surprised me. The fourth response was, I expect home prices to decline with 24%. This is a national survey, so this could make sense in some markets around the country. As a great example, we are seeing home prices actually being pushed down in a city like Austin. Austin is getting most of the national headlines right now because they're one of the biggest, but there are ultimately pockets all around the country where you are actually seeing some home values go down. But in general, I wouldn't hold your breath for this one, especially if you're here in Massachusetts. Waiting until I earn more money was the fifth highest response with 16%. Okay, this one makes sense. You ultimately need to be able to afford the house that you're buying, right? The sixth response was saving money for a down payment. While I can get behind waiting until I earn more money, this saving for a down payment is a lot more difficult. Part of the reason is that, well, the market at this point is going to outpace the amount that you can save for a down payment. Let's say that someone had the 3.5% to buy their first home that's $500,000 now. So that's $17,500. But let's say those potential home buyers have been given some bad advice to not buy a house until they have a 20% down payment. And let's also say that those buyers were able to put away a very generous $1,500 per month. One more assumption. Let's say the housing market is appreciating by 5%, which is, uh, that's a pretty low number right now. Okay, so after 12 months of saving, this buyer now is $35,500, but the issue is that the same house is now $525,000. So after a full year of paying rent and not enjoying any of the intangible benefits of owning your home plus the tangible, 
benefits of tax savings and appreciation of the property, those potential home buyers now have 6.8% for that same $500,000 house. Another 12 months, and the buyer now has $53,500 for the down payment. But that house is now worth $551,250. So they now have 9.7%. Maybe year three, that's going to be the year, right? Let's say that they are now able to put $2,000 per month away for their dream of home ownership. All right, that's now $77,500 on the same house that now appreciated to $578,812. So they now have a 13.4% down payment. 101,500 down payment after four years of saving, but the house is now worth $607,752 for a 16.7% down payment. So I guess it's going to be year five that does the trick. Let's say they're now doing $2,500 per month in savings. That's $131,500 for the down payment of a house that's worth $638,139, which is 20.6%. Those buyers did it. Yay. But in the meantime, they lost out on $138,000 in appreciation, plus the tax benefits for those four years, as well as all the wasted money paying their landlord. Oh, and by the way, those buyers return on cash for that $17,500. Had they bought the house in year one, would have been 788%. Because remember, they invested $17,500 and saw a $138,000 gain. That's their opportunity cost of not buying a house. Don't fall for the 20% down myth. The numbers, they don't lie. And the last one was, I expect better homes will become available. This one is kind of laughable for many reasons, actually. I guess in a depreciating market, then this could be the case. In an appreciating market, the house is only going to get smaller and smaller for the same amount of money. I always use my dating analogy for the grass is greener on the other side mentality for this one. Let me start by saying, I love my wife, Kelly, I love you. But had I had the mentality that there was someone else out there that was better then I would have missed out on the 10 years and three amazing daughters of special moments as well as those memories. There is no perfect house out there, just like no perfect person. I can guarantee you that even that house that you sat down and painstakingly designed with your architect will not be perfect by the time it's finished building. It's because trends and life situations, they change. Have you put your house purchase on hold? If so, I'd love to hear why in the comments section below. Just our own little survey and information gathering. Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Don't hesitate reaching out with any questions if you're thinking about buying or selling a house. Until next time.